Good evening. Um, at this, the board is just returning for a closed session with no uh, um, action was taken. I will call this meeting to order at 7, 7, 16. We have Dr. Finlay with us via teleconference. Let the record show that board member Finley is joining us via teleconference from 1137 Club Drive, Westwood, Virginia, 22947. This location is accessible to the public and members of the public wishing to address the board directly from this location will be allowed to do so. During the public comment portion of the meeting, also, since the meeting is being teleconferences, all actions will be taken by a roll call by vote. So I roll call of assistance, uh, Mr. Bell. Present. Uh, Mrs. Carroll. Here. Dr. Finley. Present. Mrs. Koo. Here. And Mrs. Diaz, myself, here. The two students uh, rep are absent today. I would like to, uh, uh, Dr. Emerson. Uh, present and all cabinet members are present. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you. We now move to the flag salute. Uh, Mr. Bell, please. Yes, we will stand and salute our fantastic flag. Ready, begin. I pledge allegiance to the, to the flag, flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Moment of silence, and then we'll read the um, the beliefs, the vision, and, uh, and our mission statement. Please be seated. Our beliefs, we believe we are a community of learners. We believe learning occurs in a culture of caring and respect. We believe all students are motivated to learn when they are engaged in meaningful work that connects to their lives. We believe expectations do influence performances and outcomes. We believe learning increases when there are high expectations for performance and conduct. We believe that we have the responsibility to find solutions that enable all of our students to learn. Our vision is the 21st century school uh, producing 21st century students. And our mission is to provide the knowledge, skills, and inspiration for each student for success in college, career, and in real life. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bell. We now move to adopt the agenda. I need a motion to adopt the agenda. Move to approve. Move by Mr. Bell. Second. Second, Second by Mrs. Carroll. Madam President. Yes, sir. Uh, with your permission, I just need to read something into the record okay. regarding the agenda. So this evening, the board is going to uh, entertain uh, the item to approve the district uh, school site safety plans. Uh, and we did learn that we had one error on one of the plans. Uh, doesn't substantively change anything in any of the plans, but we do want to recognize in consultation with our labor partner from CSEA that uh, on one of our school site safety plans, our classified representative was not uh, submitted uh, and the plans that you all received that has been amended. I want to thank Dr. Tamanaha and uh, President Christy Young for collaborating to make sure that we had this information. So we'll simply ask you to approve the school site safety plans with an amended document that I do have here just to reflect that change. So with that, uh, Madam President, uh, um, thank okay. you. Okay, thank you. Okay, um, so adopt the agenda with that amendment that is already been done. Okay, it was moved by Mr. Bell, second by Mrs. Carroll. Any other discussion? Okay, um, Mr. Bell, are you in favor? Yes, yes, sir. yes I am. Uh, Mrs. Carroll. Yes. Uh, Mrs. Koo. Dr. Finley, I'm sorry. Yes. Uh, Mrs. Koo. Yes. And Mrs. Diaz. Yes. 
Okay, since we don't have our board our student board members right now, we move to presentations. Dr. Emerson. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, at this time, we are going to present uh, the DUSD 2021 through 2024 mid-year LCAP update uh, and the 2021-2022 LCAP budget overview. Dr. Nadia Hillman, Assistant Superintendent of Educational Services is here to present this uh, information. Dr. Hillman. Good evening, board. Dr. Emerson. Um, I would like, I'm here to, tonight to provide a presentation of uh, the LCAP, the summary LCAP, a summary presentation of what is uh, as a new requirement for us this year to do a mid-year update on the LCAP. Sorry about that, guys. Um, this is a new requirement. Typically, I will come to the board in June with the LCAP with an update on how we have done, um, how we've done on our plans with metrics, with expenses and implementation, and that will still happen in June. However, this year, because there has been additional funding that's been provided to us be due to the COVID and pandemic and different dollars that have come our way with restricted, um, rest with restrictions around them, this is a new requirement that we come forward and kind of let the board know and the community know where we are with these, um, with these metrics and these expenses. So I'm going to, um, that's the purpose of this tonight. It's a new, new requirement, but you will be hearing more about this in June once again. Uh, but I'll just go over, give you, provide you right now a summary overview, although the full really in-depth um, written up summary of all that I'm going to speak about is in the um, information item in the agenda <laughs> later on in the agenda under ed services that you'll be you'll be um, you'll be presented to as well. So as an overview, I did want to say start with that we you adopted our all school districts adopt the LCAP with the budget back in June of 2021. At that point the state our state budget was not yet complete. Um, the adopted state budget that came on later included additional dollars um, that were not anticipated by our district at that time. And so the, the impact of the budget um, is as follows. Initially, we, you can see in the first column there as what the budget overview, the BOP stands for budget overview for parents, um, but that is our total LC LCFF funding. $34 million with our supplemental and concentration grants at about $5.4 million. But then you'll see with the Budget Act later on that there was an increase there that came to us um, because of the, particularly because of COVID and the impact of the pandemic. So the, the template, a uh, part of this update that we're required to write, and, and I have provided it for you in detail, has five prompts. And I'm going to give you sort of an overview of what those prompts look like. And they're stated here for you. The first one is the educational partner engagement. How did we engage our educational partners? I will tell you that um, the new term we typically use the term stakeholders. You've heard stakeholder engagement over time. Stakeholders uh, usually refers to everybody who's involved and um, impacted by um, anything that we do. Well, the new term is now educational partner. So when you hear the word educational partner, think of stakeholder stakeholders as the same idea. So the first prompt that, and you'll read in detail, is all the different ways that we have engaged our educational partners um, for these budget for looking at these budget act funds. We've had, as you know, through LCAP, and we use that process as part of the input is what we should be doing with um, to to utilize these dollars has been as played a predominant role in how we engage with our educational partners. Um, we've used, we've had meetings, we used our thought exchange. We've even had surveys for some of our uh, fundings that come along when we, when I brought to you the educational, edu educator, educational, uh, educator effectiveness grant. Um, there's been so many plans right now. I'm a little scrambled in my brain, but I will tell you have already approved that. Uh, so those are pieces that we've been um, using that input to determine what, how we're going to use those funds. Um, when we have, when we talk about the number two is the prompt that talks about the additional uh, concentration funding. So what had come from um, the state on the um, final uh, adopted budget from the state was an additional 15% increase on our concentration grant funding, and we 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 use those additional dollars to augment 
what we have in our LCAP. We have increased counseling hours for our um, academy students. We have uh, added sections at our high school to lower class sizes and provide more intervention. And we're um, including uh, hiring intervention teachers as well to provide that extra support for learning loss mitigation. The third prompt once again asks us how we are going to go about this education, educational partner engagement once again for other one-time federal dollars. Some of these one-time federal dollars we have received, some of them we are yet to receive with more plans coming before you, including the ones that you've already seen, the ELO plan that you've already seen, you've seen the educator effectiveness grant. There's another, uh, uh, you'll see it tonight on the agenda, our A through G completion improvement grant funding. Other grants that are coming include um, our uh, expanded learning program grant. So all of these new dollars that are coming around, how are we continuing that conversation with our educational partners? We do that through our LCAP process. You'll all be speaking a little bit about meetings coming up and another thought exchange as well. Um, the next prompt talks uh, asks us to speak to what we've been doing with our SR3 implementation plan. You've already seen that plan, but what we've been using, what we're using those dollars for, what have been our successes, and then what are some of our challenges? Our successes include how we provided uh, all the PPE and provided um, any, any improvements that we need in air quality in the school district, in the classrooms, all those things that would be how we protect, kept our staff and our students safe. Uh, we have expanded our health services and independent study programs and special education services and supplemental funds to provide extra tutoring hours and compensation for employees to provide those extra support. We've applied them toward um, improving and in, in uh, supplementing our technology and, and other instructional materials that will help address our long-term um, learning loss mitigation. Some of the challenges I will say that we, we uh, that, and you'll see it in there written in depth about with our implementation of SR3 dollars includes some of um, sometimes finding um, the candidates to hire. Uh, there's a shortage of labor right now. We uh, Availability of substitutes is a, a challenge that we're up against all the time. We've had increased costs in many areas, including transportation. Um, we've had uh, our transportation companies that we've been working with have had their challenges finding uh, appropriate and uh, trained uh, drivers and some vendor in inventory shortages on technology and other resources. So those are just a a snippet of some of the challenges we find using those dollars that are really helping our, our staff, I um, mean, uh, the work that we're doing. And finally, the um, fifth prompt really asks, how are we using these resources to, consistent with our LCAP? And I've listed here just for you to think about um, the, the LCAP goals that we always keep in mind, because this is really about adding and augmenting the work that we've made a commitment to doing. So in this mid-year point, just a reminder, you did approve a, a, a plan in June. In the beginning of the year, we weren't. We had a baseline metric on many of our um, of our goals. We've had expenditures that we started with, and implementation has started. Started at a midpoint year. At this point in the year, we're kind of halfway there. And in, at this point, and you'll see it. Some of the some of the outcomes are known, and some of them are not. And that's why I assure you, you'll be hearing about this again at the end of the year, um, because we are responsible for using these dollars and accountable for using them for the purpose that they're intended to be used for. And in that, that way, it's this year's dollars for these children that we have in our district this year. And so at the end of the year, you'll see, that, and actually it's written in every single year when we do the update, there is a narrative that really explains if we haven't used all the dollars, why haven't we used the dollars or have we used them in a different way or justified that, make sure that we have um, proper explanation for how we are going to um, use those dollars to continue the work that's outlined in the LCAP. So I'm going to give you a little snippet of our first goal. Um, as you, as you may, may remember, our first goal in LCAP is providing equitable access to teaching and learning that improves outcomes for all students and close, closes the achievement gap. I've given you here um, some of the 
metrics that we know at this point in the year. And you'll see the baseline and we've had some gaps in the baseline because, because of some of the issues that I'm gonna talk about right now. So you'll see we have graduation rate that we can compare. Our baseline was 2020. We do have graduation rate in 2021 as broken down by some of our significant subgroups. We also look at our um, English language arts and math achievement on SBAC. You'll notice there's a gap. It's, we have a baseline from 2019, and then you don't see any, we do have results from 2021. Because of the pandemic, our students did not take this back in 2020. 2021, um, we just had the, the aggregate results were just released in the last, very, quite, actually quite recently. And the state kind of warns us to be cognizant about the fact that all of, every, all of the scores across the state have gone down. Um, can be a, attributed to some learning loss. Also, it is attributed to the conditions under which our students were taking these tests. Some of these students were taking them remotely. Some of them were taking in the spring when they came back to school last year. So we're very we're cognizant of that, and we do see we see do, do see a dip, and we'll continue to work on bringing those scores back up. Now that we have our students um, being able to apply the different implement different um, the different uh, strategies that we have for, for supporting our students. We have had more dropout rates in that students, we've had some students who have not completed in time, although we're working on that with um, providing extra opportunities for them to complete those, um, those uh, at, uh, graduation requirements and not dropping out before they, they uh, get a diploma. So some of the actions are the actions in the LCAP are listed here, and then uh, we I listed there what it was originally budgeted, as well as the, what we reported at first interim for each of these actions. Sort of gives you a, a time, a kind of a glimpse as to where we are. It's about halfway through the year. Um, some of the areas where we're not all the way there, we're still we're still working on that. So it's, it's a little too soon to sell, tell, but we do have plans for how we are going to be utilizing those funds for the remainder of the year. Um, in under goal two, that is, um, uh, there were, I'm sorry, there are other metrics that you didn't see under this one, but we don't, the English learner progress and reclassification rate and some of our other assessments and local assessments, we don't have this, um, the metrics yet, but they will be reported out at the end of the year. When I move on to goal two, which is the goal that I will just read it for you briefly, is establishes a school environment which fosters physical and emotional security, encourages community involvement, and promotes inclusive opportunities for student engagement. Some of the metrics that we have are, for, are presented to you here. You'll see we have had a decrease in chronic absenteeism, um, some of, somewhat of an increase in our absent, at attendance rate. Um, you will see a dramatic decline in suspension rate um, during, the, during the pandemic. Of course, the that was a year that students were not on campus for the most part. And then um, same with expulsions. There are other um, metrics that will be forthcoming that, are, that were, are still in progress as well. Um, this is a, a really kind of, I, I kind of thought this was a very interesting metric that I wanted to share. Our California Healthy Kids Survey, the baseline was from 2018-19, which was our last year kind of pre-COVID. We had the students take the survey again this year in November because we really wanted to see what the difference is. Um, we've talked a lot about social emotional health of our students and, and how, they're, the, how they're faring. Um, having them back on campus has been a huge goal and a lot of work has been done about you know, providing them safety and connectedness. And this, um, I, I think there's some validation for a lot of the good work that's been happening on our campuses. You can see there's an increase in school connectedness as well as schools being perceived as very safe or safe in, at all the grade levels. And then the actions for our uh, LCAP goal two are listed here for you as well with our first interim um, checkpoint in terms of expenditures. And on goal three, we talk in goal three a bit more about it's, um, as you, as you may recall, related to how we're providing a, um, the opportunities at the secondary level, focusing on middle school, focusing on our high schools, and providing some different opportunities in the, in the instructional models, including the electives and the high school pathways. 
And the metrics we use to measure that, some of the metrics that are here for you, some are not complete yet, but the ones that I can speak to tonight are our CTA completion rate comparing 2019 to 2021, our A through G admission to, which is um, complete, completion of the requirements for admission to the U, uh, UC or CSU, um, comparing the class of 2020 to 2021, and our early admissions program, which um, is uh, really an indicator from how students in 11th grade performed on SBAC. You can see that there, there have been some decline and some increases in some areas as well. So our next steps are before we get, I mean, there's many, many, there's a lot more to this presentation and more detail um, in, the, in the actual item in the agenda, but I did wanna bring forward to the community and to the board to let them know we are starting what we like to call our road show, uh, district stakeholder engagement. I'm, I'm using this old word here, stakeholder engagement. It should be using educational partner, um, but that's our road show that we're starting a series of meetings. Um, it, there's a, some, we're gonna be putting this flyer out soon um, with the dates. We're gonna be meeting at each of our sites. Um, Ms. Bell and myself will be doing a presentation, sort of talking a little bit about where we are with the LCAP and where we are with the budget, as well as seeking input from our educational partners for next year's LCAP. Yes, you'll see, you'll hear about this in June, our new LCAP, but wanna say, what is it that we need to be focusing on? What do we need to be working on? Because not only do we look at metrics of how our students are performing, but we also look at our, all of our educational partners, which are our students, our staff, our, our family, our families, our parents and guardians and the community members. And this is a way to reach out and get started with that conversation. And we will be using our, um, our thought exchange platform that we've used in the path, past. And we'll be really asking the question that's right here on the screen. What are some things you think our schools are doing well? And what are some things we can focus on in order to improve? And we'll be launching this next week, sort of in conjunction with our roadshow and hope that we get lots of responses to help us with our um, work that way. So that was a very high, uh, sort of quick, summary of what's in more detail. I just want to acknowledge all the hard work and dedication of our employees um, and the support of our family, uh, families and parents and really the resilience of our students mm -hmm. to continue and to reach for success. At this time, I'm- Thank you, Dr. Hellman. Board members. The only thing I wanted to ask is, I would love to get the results of the survey that you were gonna you know, the extent to the community. And it'd be great to hear what they respond, how they respond. That will be part of my LCAP update again when I come back um, in the spring. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. I was gonna say too, um, I really love the idea of the road shows going back out again, because we did that a couple years back and it was so informative. Uh, and I learned, you know, for myself too, learned so much and how the budget and how worth all the money, the concentration, all the, it really does educate you to knowing what how the money is spent in the district, which I'm glad we're doing that again. I and I'm, I want to go to several of them if I can, but um, I was going to ask you about the um, A to G category. I don't know if I if we went back. It looked like we went down a mm -hmm. little bit on mm -hmm. that. Can you explain that a little bit? Why maybe? Yeah. So um, it's interesting that that and and it's yes, I can, and I would like to connect it to an item that you'll see later on, which is a plan for the A through G improvement grant. Um, our A through G rate did decline, and we're working with the high school to look at what are what are the what's the root cause of that. Um, some of it's related to making sure that all of our courses are um, A through G approved, which is a process. We have a lot of um, uh, many of our students that choose a pathway and, and maybe choosing the CTE pathway. We want to make sure that CTE, all of our CTE classes are A through G approved, as well as our, all of our students meeting all those requirements. Some of the areas can be in the area of math, um, and making sure that our students complete all the math that's needed to uh, uh, be um, accepted for UC and, and, a, and a US use. You see in CSU. So those are the areas that we're still working on and looking at. We know we've had some loss over the last couple of years. We've also have, we also, because of the decline in enrollment, our master schedule has compressed. So there's been different, you know, trying to make sure that those offerings are robust and will be um, meet the needs of our students for that rate. Thank you for that. Thank you. Any other question or comment? 
No. Um, oh, go ahead, doctor. Uh, a, a quick question for Dr. Hellman. Thank you for, for putting together uh, this presentation. I, I just had a, a quick question about the, um, some, I mean, some of the, the budgetary numbers that we have in here. Are, are the, I mean, there, there was a certain amount of money allocated uh, towards certain items um, that has not been exhausted yet um, at this first interim report. Will, will that, I mean, is the plan to exhaust those by the end of this academic year or can these be used, uh, can these monies be used for, for future academic years? Typically, we would that the expectation is we would expend those dollars this year. These are dollars for this year's students, so we would be spending those dollars as long as they are in line with what the expected expectation is, with the um, with the goals that are set in the LCAP. Uh, at the end of the year, when I come back and and it's it, it's it kind of written out in narrative form as to what has been expended and. If it hasn't been expended, what has it been expended on? So it'll be it'll be written out at that point. If there is a short, if there is a uh, place that we haven't spent all those dollars. Okay, thank you, Dr. Hemlin. Just for um, <clears throat> for the community to know exactly, um, I would like to know um, uh, what LC. <laughs> LCAP means. I know Thank it's you. local. <laughs> There's, I use a lot of letters. I know, I, know do. I do. I apologize. I get I get called out on that in my home because my talk in, in a language nobody understands. The LCAP stands for Local Control Accountability Plan. Local control. So here at the board, here I am speaking to the board in the community. It is monies that are 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 allocated to our district, but it's our decision as to how we want to allocate those dollars. Of course, there are expectations. We need to focus our supplemental and concentration grants on improving and increasing services for students in what we call unduplicated pupils. I know I'm taking a little extra time explaining this, but I think it's really important to remember that the, the supplemental and, and concentration grants are in effect a restricted resource, meaning we need to use them and we need to be say, we need to be able to, uh, we're accountable for improving and increasing those services for those students. Those students are our low income students, our students from uh, uh, English learners and our foster youth. That, that is, although it's a local control plan, the state has determined those are our areas of focus. And we wanna ensure, and we don't, when some of our schools have different, different demographics and some of our schools may, there, there may be more students in, in some schools and not, and not in the others. So we need to be focusing those dollars in that way. Yeah, thank you. Also, I would like to know CTA classes. Okay. What is C oh career tech technical education? Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. I know in in the in the format of, of this uh, uh, presentation, forgive me for using all those. those That's okay. Abbreviations some... because I know it's it just makes it really concise. Career technical education, of course, you all know, but I just want to remind the community as well. Those are those pathways that provide our students with other opportunities or get them exposed to jobs after high school that may or may not necessarily require a college degree. We have a wonderful program right now, CTE Pathways with our culinary, that's a representative one that I can speak about. We have others that we have, we're building, we have in place and we are continuing to build. Thank you, Dr. Hillman. Madam President. So one, uh, one piece of clarification, I just wanna make sure that we do. So Dr. Uh, Hillman, we, we uh, realized that on the flyer, our first roadshow is on the 22nd and we'll have our special board meeting that night, which we just scheduled. So we'll need to augment when that MIT uh, roadshow uh, session is. Yes, that, that, went, up the, that went to the, uh, the agenda was printed after we were able to, um, we, we put out the flyer. So the flyer has not, that flyer you saw on the screen has not been distributed yet because we do need to make an adjustment because we do have a, a, another board meeting coming, but that, but that will be adjusted very soon. Thank you, Dr. Hamlin. Absolutely. Okay, we'll now continue with our meeting and superintend superintendent report, Dr. Emerson.
Thank you, Madam President, uh, members of the board and uh, community. It's, uh, <clears throat> it's always a, a, a good time to take the middle of the year to reflect. I wanna thank Dr. Hillman for her comprehensive report and presentation to the board to, to really just do this check-in to provide some clarity and, uh, and, and a little bit of information about where we are, what we've accomplished thus far through the middle of the year and, uh, and where we're headed next. Uh, I wanna thank all of our students, our staff, our parents and our community uh, for the hard work that they all uh, kind of had to roll up our sleeves and, and endure the month of January. The month of January was a very, 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 very challenging month uh, for lots of reasons around the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, and the measures and the steps that we've taken as a school district, I think continues to allow us to, to properly respond and, and, and be able to do the things necessary to number one, keep our schools open, um, keep our students and staff safe, uh, and continue to provide the learning experiences that all of our scholars deserve. And so I just wanna just say a heartfelt thank you to our students and staff and our families for making sure that we could keep our schools open during that uh, unprecedented surge in COVID. Um, I had the, 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 the honor and the privilege to uh, be a substitute employee in our school district yesterday. Uh, I actually substituted along with uh, my colleague, uh, Dr. Hillman. We were one-on-one -on -one, uh, special education aides yesterday in one of our severely handicapped uh, classrooms. Uh, and it was a great opportunity for us to, number one, spend time with our students. Um, but it also, I think in a lot of ways, and I'm gonna take a little liberty and, and, and put words in Dr. Hillman's mouth, but it helped us reconnect to things that we're passionate about around the student experience, about the teaching and learning process. And so I was very, very uh, grateful and, thank, uh, and thankful for uh, Mrs. Ashley Carlos, who is an amazing special education teacher at Andrew Stewarty, uh, for, for providing that experience and that opportunity uh, for, for, uh, for us. I wanted to, to share just a quick update for the community on where we are with respect to the consolidation project that's happening at Andrew Stewarty in, in the district. Uh, and there have been uh, some additional meetings that have been scheduled for the community and our board to, uh, to provide us with uh, a next steps and kind of a roadmap for moving forward. So on January, excuse me, February the 17th, we are going to have a study session. And during that study session, uh, staff will present a, a series of options and a series of potential maps that the board can consider for, uh, for adoption for going from having five um, K, K6 slash K8 school district boundaries and reducing that down to four, and then making recommendations for where the students that are currently assigned to Andrew Stewarty where they would be reassigned as their next school of attendance. So during that special, uh, excuse me, during that study session, we'll uh, work with uh, legal counsel, as well as our consultant, as well as superintendent and staff to uh, facilitate the discussion and that conversation with the board, take feedback, take recommendations. And then it is our intention to come back on February the 22nd uh, and recommend actual uh, an actual map for the board's adoption. Uh, that will allow us to make that uh, decision and that determination in the month of February, which then allows us to work with families on kindergarten registration, how, uh, allows us to work with families on intra-district transfer uh, window and, and to provide the, uh, the necessary uh, transitionary process and transitionary information that we know so many of our families are really, really concerned about right now. So um, that's gonna be uh, a, ma a major focus for us over the next uh, few weeks. I wanna invite the community and invite our families to be a part of that discussion, to hear what the board is considering and the, uh, the options that we're presenting. And then we look forward to, uh, to moving forward with a recommendation after the, board, after the board's had a chance to have that, that discussion and that deliberative uh, uh, process. So with that, that's the conclusion of my report. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Dr. Emerson. We now move to request to address the board. Dr. Finlay, do you have any members of the public at the remote location that you would like to address the day? The day that uh, you would like there, to address there, the board? There are no members of the public uh, here to address the board. Thank you. Okay, Dr. Emerson. Thank you, Madam President. We do have one speaker this evening. I would invite uh, Janelle Gonzalez to address the board. And Janelle, you will have three minutes. Thank you. 
I'm going to see my way out so you can get to your meeting right after. So I'm not like storming out. Um, good evening. Can you hear me? Sorry. My name is Janelle Gonzalez and I am the mother to Alex who is in fifth grade and Andres who is in kindergarten at Royal Oak Steam Academy. I'm here to address the public health order and the mask mandate. I wanna start by saying my kids love their school. This is why coming here to speak up is not easy. We couldn't be more grateful with the principal, staff, teachers, and everyone working hard on the Royal Oaks Academy campus. Also Rick Crosby on the school board has been a great support to me and a great sounding board. So thank you. My children are not thriving with a mask on. I have an 11 year old that cannot tolerate it and a six year old who is autistic and severely speech delayed. He can't read people's lips or facial expressions with masks on, which is severely impacting his development. If he had the words, he would try and speak up, but he can't. So I have to do it for him and that's why I'm here. I'm calling on the district to stand up to LA County and make the first move and set the precedence for the other districts in our area. Be the brave ones and be bold enough to say enough. We've complied for two years, but now we need to start getting our students back to normalcy. We need to start leaving it up to parents to decide what is best for their families. The state of emergency is over. We have seen our leaders who imposed these very mandates break them time and time again. I am tired of hearing from everyone that your hands are tied. They were never tied. You allowed LA County to control you. A mandate is not a law. You've told me that you are liable if you do not impose these mandates. But you are also liable if my 11 year old loses consciousness from running with a mask on outside. This happened to us two weeks ago when I got a call from the nurse's office and I had to pick him up from school. We can't live like this anymore. We have suffered enough and so have many other kids. Merely giving parents the choice will not mean all parents will send their kids without masks. If you haven't noticed, the culture around Doherty is one of extreme fear. 80% of the parents will continue to send their kids with masks on. It will only be a small percentage like myself that will not. Therefore, there's no way you will lose your funding or schools will be shut down. I do believe that you have more power than you think. You could make your city and students so proud and do the right thing. So it's your move now. Don't be on the losing side of history. Show LA County that you can do this safely and effectively. I believe your friends in neighboring districts will follow the leaders here, which could be you. So please allow mass choice for door to USD families. Thank you. Thank you very much for your comments. Thank you. We now move to general functions. Approve the minutes of regular meeting of January 2022. Um, January 20, 2022. I need a motion. So move. Move by Mr. Bell. Second. Second. Second by Mrs. Koo. Any discussion? Okay, uh, Mr. Bell. Yes. Uh, Mrs. Carroll. Yes. Mrs. Uh, Dr. Finley. Yes. Uh, Mrs. Ku. Yes. And Reina Diaz. Yes. The next item of business is the adoption of consent calendar. Does anyone want to remove any item for separate discussion or action? Seeing, seeing none, then um, we need a motion to approve the minutes. Most, mo a motion to approve the minutes. 
Move by Madam, I'm uh, sorry. President, just clarify consent calendar. Consent calendar. I'm sorry. Yeah, thank you. I'm reading minutes. I don't know where. Okay. Approve the consent calendar. I'm sorry. Okay. It was moved by Mr. Bell. Second. Second by Mrs. Carroll. Um, Mr. Bell. Yes. Uh, Mrs. Carroll. Yes. Uh, Dr. Fenley. Yes. Mrs. Koo. Yes. And Reina Diaz. Yes. The consent calendar has been approved. Thank you. Moving to personal student services, public hearing. Changes in the collective bargaining agreement between the Duarte Unified Education Association and the Duarte Unified School District for the 2021-2022 school year. I need a motion to open the public hearing. Move to open. Move my Mr. Bell. Second. Second, second by Ms. Carroll. Okay, the motion is open. Uh, at been second and I'm sorry, been moving second. Uh, Mr. Bell. Yes. I, uh, Mrs. Carroll. Yes. Dr. Finley. Dr. Yes. And uh, Mrs. Koo. Yes. And Reina Diaz. The public hearing is now open. Since I don't see anyone approaching the microphone, do I have a motion to close the public? Motion hearing? to close. Moved by Mr. Bell. Second by? Second. By Mrs. Koo. Okay, Mr. Bell. Yes. Mrs. Carroll. Yes. Dr. Finley. Yes. Mrs. Koo? Yes. And Reina Diaz, yes. We now have closed our public hearing. Moving to item 14.2, change, changes in the collective bargaining, bargaining agreement between the Duarte Unified Education Association and the Duarte Unified District for the 2020-2021 school year. May I have a motion? Motion. So, second. Motion by Mrs. Carroll. Second by Mr. Bell. Any discussion? Okay, Mr. Bell. Yes. Mrs. Carroll. Yes. Dr. Finley. Yes. Mrs. Koo. Yes. And Reina Diaz, yes. Moving along for item 14.3, MOU between the du Duarte Unified School District and the DUAA dated December 9, 2021. May I have a motion? So move. Move by Mr. Bell, second. Second. Second by Mrs. Carroll. Any discussion? Okay, roll call, Mr. Bell. Yes. Mrs. Carroll. Yes. Ms. Uh, Dr. Finley. Yes. Mrs. Koo. Yes. And Reina Diaz. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Item fourteen point four MOU between the DUSD and DUEA, dated December fourteen, twenty twenty one. May I have a motion? Move to approve. Moved by Mr. Bell. Second. Second by Mrs. Koo. Any discussion? Okay, roll call, Mr. Bell. Yes. Mrs. Carroll. Yes. Dr. Finley. Yes. Uh, Mrs. Koo. Yes. And Reina Diaz, yes. Item 14.5, resolution number 13-21-22 regarding non-reelection and release from employment of temporary certificated employees. May I have a motion? So move. 
Moved by Mr. Bell. Second? Second. Second by Mrs. Second. Carroll. Oh. <laughs> any discussion or any question? Um, I would like to know a little bit about it. Is this is uh, something that we do every year, Dr. Emerson? Thank you, Madam President. Uh, Mr. Crosby, would you like to address that question? Yes, ma'am. Yes, Madam President. This is a routine item that we we have to do every year before um, any type, uh, our temporary teachers are on a year-to-year -year contract. And um, we anticipate uh, some reduction in staff before we could do any reduction in staff, we have to release our temporary teachers prior. So um, this is the step that we, we do that. I'll be meeting with each of these uh, temporary teachers. And now our, our temporary teachers are, are, are teachers uh, teaching our classes but we have other teachers that are outside of the classroom. So we have to hold their spots. Um, mm -hmm. So we, have, we are allowed to hire a, a year to year teacher to be in the spot when someone's not um, outside the classroom to hold this, like our, our teacher and learning coaches that are outside the classroom. We have to hold uh, their spots. Okay, thank you. Or thank someone you. was out on um, any kind of leave like uh, injury or illness leave, uh, then, we would have someone in their spot for them as well. I see. Okay, thank you, Mr. Crosby. Okay, um, roll call. Um, Mr. Bell. Yes. Uh, Mrs. Carroll. Yes. Dr. Finley. Yes. Mrs. Koo. Yes. And Diaz, Reina Diaz, yes. Item 14.6, 2022-2023, Comprehensive School Safety Plan. May I have a motion? Move to approve. Move by Mr. Bell. Second. Second by Mrs. Carroll. Okay. Oh, cool. Mrs. Cool. Thank you. Any discussion? No discussion. Oh, no? Are these, <clears throat> these plans are kept in the district office. We can just read them anytime we get in, in a chance. Yes, that's correct. So we, we do have the plans available also. Um, the, um, the, the board gets the comprehensive plan and the community also has access to a redacted plan, but the board has uh, direct access to the, uh, the comprehensive plan. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, Mr. Bill. And, uh, oh, go ahead. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I, I was just going to ask Madam President, um, uh, Dr. Emerson, would, would you mind just, uh, briefly explaining the the reason why the the redacted form is made to the community and, and not the completed form yes uh thank you uh board member finley so there there are two versions of the plan uh there's uh there's a general um there's a general overview of the plan that's provided to the community because it's in the community's interest to to know what the the general procedures are at each of our school sites. However, um, to make sure that we keep our campuses, community, and our students safe, there are certain specific sensitive aspects to the plans that are redacted and not for, for the public consumption in the event that we need to properly respond to some type of calamitous event that may happen or may occur on campus. So we need to have certain protocols that we do keep in a confidential manner, but we would obviously advise the board of that and uh, the staff that is on also a need to know basis would have access to that information as well. Okay, any other question or comments? Mr. Bell? No, um, yes. Okay, go ahead. I didn't mean no. Oh, no, oh you no mean question. No. I was just reading. I was just reading. Yes. <laughs> the answer is yes. So to just to clarify, that's a yes vote, correct, yeah. Mr. Bell? That's correct. Yes. Vote. Mrs. Mrs. Carroll. Yes. Dr. Finley. Yes. Mrs. Koo. Yes. And Mrs. Yes. Yes. Moving to uh, item 15.1, educational services. Duarte Unified School District designee, designee to Citrus Colors Regional, Regional Consortium. I'm so sorry, tonight I'm not doing my best. <laughs> okay, I need a, a motion to approve. Motion to approve. Citrus. Okay, motion by Mrs. Carroll. 
Second. Second. Second by Mrs. Ku. Uh, any discussion? Question. Can you elaborate a little bit about this, please? So, uh, as uh, the board's uh, well aware, we have very, very strong uh, partnerships with Citrus College. This particular consortium is really around the adult education block grant. Uh, it establishes uh, certain programs and services that uh, we are a part of. And as a part of that consortium, we have an assigned representative that represents the district and the board's interests. The normal uh, person who attends on this particular consortium is Mr. Kevin Morris, our principal at MIT uh, and our director of alternative programs. Uh, and then in the event that Mr. Morris is not available, we are asking the board to approve that Dr. Nadia Hillman would be um, the, the, uh, the proxy in the event that Mr. Morris is not available. Thank you. <clears throat> Mr. Bell, calling for a vote. The answer is yes. Thank Approved. you. Mrs. Carroll? Yes. Dr. Finley? Yes. Mrs. Ku? Yes. And Reina Diaz, yes. Item 15.2, a G complete, completion improvement grant program is just to receive her information <coughs> of, of a G completion improvement grant program. So also just for information, receive her information, the Duarte Unified School District 2021, 2024, Local Control and Accountability Plan, LCAP, mid-year update on the, on the annual update of the 2021-2022 LCAP and budget overview. And that is only for information. Moving to 16, business and finances. Um, accept the bid, item 16.1, accept the bid, bid and award contract to a Spectrum to provide the district E-rate C1470 internet service provider, ISP and Y access network WAN services. May I have a motion? So move. <clears throat> move by Mr. Bell. Second. Second. Second by Carol, Mrs. Carol. Any discussion, any yeah, question? I just had one quick question, you know, one uh, 111, the amount of money between 84 and 111, just, it just, it, what stuck out from Spectrum versus the Crown Castle, just curious. Well, this is a, this is a, a process that is clearly in uh, the wheelhouse of uh, Mr. Eric Ramos. He, he negotiates uh, these, not negotiates this because it's went through a bid process. So, um, you know, the bids come in, we open the bids uh, and, and all for all intents and purposes, lo low bid customarily wins. Um, unless there's something that's just egregious about that particular bid. Um, if uh, the board would like additional information about kind of the criteria and the things that Mr. Ramos considers as he negotiates and interacts with these particular vendors, we'd be happy to provide that and a follow-up communicate to the board. However, we do recommend that the board accept this. <laughs> Any other question or? Okay, uh, Mr. Bell. Yes. Uh, Mrs. Carroll? Yes. Dr. Finley? Yes. Uh, Mrs. Koo? Yes. And Reina Diaz, yes. Item 16.2, adopt resolution number 1421-22, establishing the Assessed Management Advisory Committee and approving the committee bylaws for the committee. May I have a motion? Move, move to approve. Move by Mr. Bell, second. Second. Second by Mrs. Ku. Discussion. Ah, uh, do you like to elaborate a little bit on this, uh, Dr. Emerson? Yes, thank you. Thank, thank you, you, Madam President. So this is uh, this is follow-up work uh, from the, the the project that we're working on regarding the consolidation of Andrew Stewarty. And so the, the board had gone through a deliberative conversation and uh, quite the discussion on, you know, what are all the things that are going to go into a successful transition, a transitionary process. And so one of the things that we uh, had as a recommendation from legal counsel and Serene Abrahamian from Orbach Huff and 
Henderson is here this evening to field any questions in the in the event that the board does have any questions. But um, one of the recommendations was to form a 7-Eleven type committee. Mm -hmm. uh, that was something that the board was interested in. And so we worked with um, Serene and her office to draft the bylaws that you see in front of you this evening. This will allow us, at, at, with the board's permission, uh, this will allow us to then engage with the community to solicit applications for people who would want to participate in this process uh, in hopes of going through a very public, very transparent process to determine what are the options and the opportunities that the board could consider with, with respect to the disposition of that property. And so this moves us forward in the comprehensive approach that we're taking to this particular project. Uh, and I am very hopeful that the board accepts the recommendation. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, I have a wondering, I just, um, I guess, for the community sake, when will they, I guess, be able to apply? And so they have an understanding of the timeline of what is going to happen after this. So uh, upon the time that the board uh, approves the bylaws, we can immediately um, provide an application get that information out, uh, publicize that to the community and start to solicit, solicit those applications. One of the things that we have discussed is what is a, what's a potential timeline. Um, there is a, a, um, a roadmap of a number of meetings and a number of benchmarks that would need to be met. Uh, it is our hope and intention to um, have this approved tonight, get the applications, seek those, uh, those folks who are willing to serve in this particular role identified, come back with those recommendations to the board as, as soon as possible once we have a viable candidate field, and then uh, begin to agendize those meetings, get those meetings publicized, so that way the process can start. Again, very hopeful that we can uh, go through this process throughout the rest of this late winter, early spring, and have some concrete discussions and recommendations moving forward late spring into the summer. Thank you. <clears throat> Any other questions or comments? Uh, Madam President, may I ask a question? Yes, sir. Uh, so, uh, Dr. Emerson, can you talk a little bit about the, the composition of this, this committee and, uh, I guess, most importantly, where the members of this committee need to reside? Uh, absolutely, Dr. Finley, but I actually think that uh, Serene would probably do a much better job than me in, in this particular, in responding to this. So I'll ask her to come forward and she'll take us through that criteria. Thank you. Thank you for having me tonight. Um, Dr. Finley, to your question, uh, with regard to what the education code requires as far as community groups that are to be represented on the committee, pursuant to education code section 17389, members shall be representative of each of the following. And I'm going to, I'm going to read them off just because I want to be precise about it ethnic age group and socioeconomic composition of the district. So that's uh, A. B, the business community, such as store owners, managers, or supervisors. C, landowners or renters, with preference to be given to the representatives of neighborhood associations. D, teachers, E, administrators, F, parents of students, and G, persons with expertise in environmental impact, legal contracts, building codes, and land use planning, including but not limited to knowledge of the zoning and other land use restrictions of the cities or cities and counties in which surplus space and real property is located. And this list can be found, so of course it's in the education code that I referenced, but also in the bylaws on page five, section six, specifically 6.2. And then as far as um, the requirements for membership, so to be eligible, members must be at least 18 years of age and must reside within district boundaries. And that's also within section six, section 6.1 and section 6.3. I hope that answers your question, Dr. Finn. Yes, that's perfect, thank you. Thank you, Serene. Okay, um, I will ask for your vote. Mr. Bell. Yes. Uh, Mrs. Carroll. Yes. Dr. Finley. Yes. 
Mrs. Ku? Yes. And Reina Diaz, yes. At this time, we will move to non-agenda items by more members um, and superintendents. So, Mr. Bell. Well, again, uh, thank you for a well-presided uh, meeting. Uh, Reina, I appreciate it. Um, yeah, I went to a, a, um, a funeral service for one of the young ladies who was really loved in our school district, uh, Gabby Duenas. Place was full at, at uh, the Catholic Church in right there in Monrovia. And uh, you could just feel, feel. I mean, I, I had known that a lot of people talked about her and they had strong feelings about her. And uh, you could just feel it throughout the whole service. But it, the place was, was, was very full. And I was really happy as I Rick and uh, I believe it was, I can't think of the other young lady, uh, but she was also there from school district. I think she's yeah, the, the principal, principal, Aaron Fish. Right, Aaron Fish. And so again, it was just great. It was a great feeling. It was a community feeling. I just wanted to kind of uh, close in her honor tonight. She was just really a sweet young lady and a lot of people had a lot of strong feelings about her. So we, we lost a good, we lost a good one. Uh, all just want to say happy Valentine's Day. We all need love. Everybody take care of somebody. <laughs> but it's just happy Valentine's Day to all of us. And thank you. That's all I have, Madam President. Thank you, Mr. Bell. Mrs. Koo? Oh, I wasn't expecting that. Um, <laughs> I got in that line. <laughs> I don't have much to say. I just want to, again, thank everyone for their hard work and um, a lot of insight that everyone gives in helping us make these decisions. I know, again, we do them really quickly, but there's a lot of discussion that goes into it. So I just wanted to appreciate you all for um, preparing us the best to of your ability. So thanks. Thank you, Mrs. Ku. Uh, Mrs. Carroll. I'm going to echo what Ms. Ku said and also add happy Valentine's Day on Monday. I'm excited about tomorrow, new school. <laughs> um, <laughs> seems, you know, um, a day off, but um, otherwise, um, I'm excited on the 19th for the groundbreaking ceremony of our gym. So I'm looking forward to that and really hopeful, you know, with our high school, it's just, it's exciting for them, honestly, and for future kids to come to our just ones who will come into the high school of getting a brand new sports center. So I'm excited about that too. And that's all I have to say. Thank you. And I just would like to echo, uh, oh, I'm sorry, Mr. P Dr. Finley. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Dr. <Finley. laughs> <laughs> That's what you get for being in Virginia. All right, all right. I don't see your. Face. I know, I know. It's true. It's true. I, I, I want to. I do want to thank um, uh, Cece for uh, reminding everyone about Valentine's Day. All, all I gotta say is, uh, thank goodness that Amazon Prime ships very quickly. <laughs> <laughs> so. <laughs> Hopefully, hopefully Megan isn't tuned into this one. Um, <laughs> anyway, I, I wanted I wanted to to just um, give give a special um, thanks to to all of our um, I, I believe uh, Dr. Hillman said uh, educational partners is is the new uh, term these days um, for everybody's efforts in in getting. Um, us through a really pretty pretty rough um you know last six or so weeks uh with the omicron variant uh spread and everything uh going on i know that there were a lot of of students that were out there were there were um family members that had to be attended to um and there there were a lot of um extra efforts that went on um, after the bell um, for everybody. So I, I want to just express gratitude for, for keeping the train on the tracks and, and really doing everyone doing their very best. And um, I, I wanted to, to also just share um, just, just kind of a thought I had this week. There, there is a, uh, a podcast that I listen to uh, pretty, pretty regularly called uh, Freakonomics, and uh, they they always sign off on that podcast saying um, to take care of yourself, and if you can, somebody else. Um, and and I really feel like that is something that exemplifies uh, the BUSD community. There's there's people that are not only taking care of themselves, but are also taking care of others. And and I really 
uh, want to give a, a big virtual pat on the back uh, to all those individuals. Um, and and don't don't ever underestimate the the power that uh, you have of really changing the the trajectory of somebody's day um, by just a, a simple text, phone call, smile, um, pleasant comment, anything like that can can really make a big difference. And so um, I, I've seen I've seen that uh, over you know for myself over the last couple of weeks and, and I've seen it in, in the lives of my own kids um, through through interactions that they've had with adults on campus. And so, um, it's made a big difference, and uh, I would just encourage everyone to, to keep doing that, and kudos to, to those that have done that. Um, and um, happy Valentine's Day on Monday, and, and I'm, I'm really jazzed about the, the groundbreaking um, ceremony as well uh, in just a little bit. So thank you. Thank you, Dr. Finley. For me, I echo all my colleagues' comments. It is just a... A, a, a huge responsibility to come to a board meeting and be prepared to say yes, yes, no, or ask some questions. But we, we do receive a lot of information prior of, not, not just prior, but some like about five days before the board meeting. But it takes hours and hours of work from everyone to to give that information to us and uh, be prepared to represent the community. So I thank you all of you and, um, and always um, to Mercedes too for your help. Um, I don't know what I do without you. <laughs> we, we wouldn't know. Oh, do she does. So, I mean, I call her for everything. And I know Dr. Emerson is VC and I ask her some things. If, she say, Reina, you need to ask him that. Then, okay, let me talk to him. <laughs> so, but thank you to all of you to make possible for us to come in and make the, the best decisions um, that we can. Um, with that, I will ask uh, Dr. Emerson. Uh, thank you, uh, Madam President. Uh, I wanna just conclude uh, this evening by um, thanking the board for um, kind of your steadfast commitment um, to the direction that we need to go, the work that we need to do. Um, it's, um, it's very, very invigorating to, to have the, the support of being able to move in, in a direction that we all commonly have understood and we've grown and learned together. Uh, and I think, we're, I think we're doing very, very good work. And so I just wanna thank you all for, for that. Um, I wanna take a moment uh, at kind of this bit of a mid mid year check in, uh, and uh, extend a thank you specifically by name to each member of my team, uh, to Dr. Nadia Hillman, Mr. Rick Crosby, and Miss Tiffany Bell, uh, and of course uh, Mrs. Mercedes Ruiz for uh, for the work because you know I I'm the benefactor of being able to stand up here and 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 have conversations with the board and and be able to do this work, but they do a lot of the work behind the scenes that empowers me to be able to have these conversations and make these decisions and, and feel comfortable and confident uh, to do the right thing for kids uh, in, this, in this role. And so I wanna say thank you to, to each of you for the work that you do. I, I very much appreciate it. Thank you. Um, and then the last thing, what, what are we talking, what is Valentine's Day? What, 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 when is that again? I miss it, and, and you know, you miss it. And I know that this is not live streaming, which is why I can get away with saying what I'm saying right now, because by the time she sees it, it'll I'll have fixed it. All right. And with that, Madam President, uh, thank you so much. I was going to tell you to ask your wife. <laughs> in, in all seriousness, my son did uh, send me a text earlier going, hey, it, I can't find the live stream. I'm like, yeah, because it's down right now. So in all seriousness, they were trying to watch it. So, yeah. Okay, with that, I will need to move to uh, to close session. No, just kidding. Not close session. To adjourn. And I know that uh, Mr. Bell mentioned uh, the name of... Do you got the name? We, we have adjourned it earlier. Oh, we already did. Okay, thank you. Okay, then I need to um, adjourn in memory of Maria de la Luz Jaro 
who mm -hmm. is was um, Mr. Luis Haro mother, and Mr. Haro is our uh, principal at the high school. So I need a motion to. And also, you. Madam President, uh, his brother Jesse Haro is also one of our employees. Oh, okay, yes. yeah. So move. Okay, move by Mr. Bell. Second. Second by Second. Carol. Okay, and any other comments? Okay, Mr. Bell. Yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> um, the, Mrs. Carroll. Yes. Uh, Dr. Finley. Yes. And Mrs. Ku. Yes. And myself, Reina Diaz. Yes, thank you all of you. This meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Thank you.